on this item on the exam, we've got a uh, L-shaped floor plan for a building. There's our column spacing. They're at somewhat irregular spacing. Uh, we have the beams that then frame between the columns and then the individual floor joists. And we're told that these other little short lines are stability bracing and not to be considered to be a beam. And so that helps us to then deal with what we're asked to do. And that's we're, we're supposed to look at this one beam that spans between the columns and come up with an appropriate uh, structural model, which means we have three components, the load, the structure, and the supports of that beam. Now, the structure itself at this stage in our uh, modeling is just a single line to represent the, the beam. We'll talk about EI and all those kinds of things at another uh, point in time. This is really just about the supports. We're told it's, the beam is pin connected, so a simply supported beam makes a lot of sense. And then we just got to look to see what frames into this particular beam. And so we've got a series of parallel beams, which means that then we get a tributary width coming in to the beam, which is going to create a distributed force that is uniform. Right? So that would be our W. And then we've got um, a couple of girders that frame in, and the reactions of those are going to then create symmetrically placed point loads. Now let's look a little bit more closely at things here and the, the kinds of dimensions. How do we know that that's exactly what's going on? Well, again, we're told that we have pin-connected members, and so all the joists are pin-connected. They are 35 feet long, and when we look at this uh, spacing down here, 30 feet divided into to 3 is 10, so three, over a 3 and a half to, to 1 ratio. That means this slab is a one-way slab, and only down here in these edges might we get a little bit of a triangular kind of effect, but that one-way action means that we want to model the loads that come into this beam as two-point loads. Um, and that will have a different effect than if we did the approximate model, which said let's do a tributary area coming out uh, all the way effectively to where that stability bracing is at. Uh, so it does mean that we have to be a little careful here as we go through things, recognizing what the load path actually would be. And so there's our little area that's associated with one of these concentrated forces. All right, so that P, that concentrated force, then we're going to have to find that area times that pressure that's on the floor, which we're told that total equivalent floor loading is 150 PSF. And so let's go see what we've got here. One dimension is 35 feet divided by 2. The other, let's see, this was 5 feet over one way, 5 feet the other, so that's going to be um, 10 feet. And then we'll multiply that by the 150 pounds per square foot. And that should equal 26,250 pounds, or 26.25 kips. We'll have two of those because we have then two reactions that are identical coming in. Again, we've assumed here that joists are evenly spaced, at least within that bay. All right, so the last one then is to go get the W. That W then will come from our tributary width times this pressure that's on the floor. And our tributary width is, well, three spaces, that's 26 feet divided by three, but we only have one half of that space, and then times 150 PSF. And that should turn out to be 650 pounds per foot. So quite a bit smaller effect as compared to the concentrated uh, force. And there's a fairly reasonable model of our beam. We've got the load, we've got the structure, we've got the supports. Um, if you had really wanted to try to model the little two-way slab action that comes in here, we would have had, in addition to the 
concentrated force, we would have had to put a little triangular load on either uh, side, but that's going to be pretty minor compared to the primary load, particularly uh, the reaction from the girders.